Hi, my name is Cheryl O'Donnell. I'm with USDA APHIS PPQ in San Diego, California. I'm an area identifier there. My discipline is in entomology, and I'm a specialist in Thysanoptera systematics and taxonomy. Today we're going to key out some larval species that is handed to us by our biotechnician who has kindly taken the time to mount these onto a slide for us. We're going to use the Virbergen et al. key, key to the second instar thripidae. We'll begin with couplet number one on page 109. You all have been provided with a mystery slide. So couplet number one focuses in on the antennal segments, number five and four. All right, so the first part of this couplet asks if the antennal segment number five, shown here, and four is here. Is five at least half the length of four? So this length here, is it half of the length of four? And in this case, no. So let's look at our alternative choice. Antenna segment five, less than half the length of four. So I would say yes in this specimen that I'm looking at on the screen. So if you draw a line from the anterior to the posterior, it would only go about one third, one fourth of the way of segment number four. So that takes us to couplet number six, and it asks about the abdominal sternites, four through eight. All right, so what are our choices? Part A of, this, of couplet number six asks if the abdominal sternites are four through eight, have a pair of CD, at least one pair. In this case, we are looking at the abdominal sternites one, two, three, four, through eight. Okay? Do they have a pair of CD? They have more than one pair. So there's one, and there's two, and it looks like there might be three. So our couplet says, does it have one pair? It has more than one pair, so we'll keep that in mind. What is the second part of this couplet? Abdominal segment nine posterior marginally with three or four pairs of CD. So let's look at nine. Nine is here. How many pairs of CD does this have? Looks like one, two, three. So we don't fit this couplet, so let's look at the second part of this couplet, abdominal sternites four through eight with three pairs of CD. We already determined that, so yes, we have that. And we also have four or five. So let's look at, look at four or five CD on abdominal ster sternite nine. We may have to go up and focus on this one. Pretty, all right, so we have segment nine in focus. We're looking at the dorsal side, there's one, Two, and that matching set over there. Three, three, and four. Four is on the far side, so it's pretty lateral on that side. So there are four. So our couplet takes us to a larval stage two thripidae. And we would go to the second part of the key which says key to the second instar larvae of the thripidae of the Western Palearctic. That's shown in the next, next set of couplets on the same page. Antennal segment number seven, greatly elongated. So let's take a look at that. Here is seven. I would say that it is not greatly elongated. And in this description, it says seven to 10 times longer than wide. This is your width. I would say that's maybe two to three times as long as it is wide. So it doesn't fit that couplet. Let's go to the other half of the couplet. Antennal segment seven, two to four times longer than its width. Does it fit that couplet? Yes. In this specimen it does. 
Segment five is broadly attached to segment four. That is also true. And you can see that in this specimen as well. This is four and this is five and there is a large, it's very wide here. So broadly attached. So this takes us to the dendrothripinae, cerecothripinae, and thripinae, which is on page 111 on the second column. We'll start with couplet number nine. And the question, the first description asks about the abdominal tergites four through eight, showing figures 49 and 50 with scattered, almost circular, small plaques. So let's take a look at that. Now this is what we're looking at on these tergites. We're looking at the, at the plaques that are on the segments themselves. And at this level of magnification, you can see that there are plaques on them. Now let's take a look at those a little closer. So now you can see these plaques a little bit better. You can see they're not, o they're not round, they're oval shaped, almost rectangular shaped. Now again, the orientation of the larvae is that the head is to your right of your screen and the posterior end, segments 10 and 9 are to the left hand side of your screen. So we're looking at these on their side and these are elongated plaques. So we don't quite fit the first part of couplet 9. So let's move to the second part of couplet 9, and it asks if we have transverse rows of plaques. So transverse would be this way. And yes, we have many rows of these elongated oval-shaped plaques. They lack microtrichia, so there are no long teeth on here. There might be a little tooth, but there's no long CD at the edge. And there are several dorsal head and thoracic CD, usually longer than 30 microns. So let's take a look at the dorsal CD on the head and the thorax. Now there's your dorsal CD. And they are quite long. They're not short. They're relatively long. We don't have a scale to measure them but those are about 30 microns long. This takes us to the Thripinae subfamily, and that is couplet number 29, and couplet 29 is on page 119. The first part of this couplet asks you to look at the abdominal tergite number 10, so I will focus in on ter tergite 10. So let's just get oriented here. This is tergite 9, this is tergite 10. The, the couplet asks the D1CD spine-like or thickened at the base. It's not really spine-like, it's more lanceate. So it's thicker at the base, but it's long and thin, more like a sword, uh, sword or a spike. It's not thickened at the base. So this is actually the second part of the couplet abdominal tergite 10, D1, CD, bristle-like. Sometimes widening apically, but not in this case. There's a list of figures that you can go to that look similar to this. Figures 106 is one of the examples. So this takes you to couplet number 44 on page 121. And the first part of this couplet asks for most dorsal CD short Pronotal CD D6, usually less than 20 microns. So let's take a look at most dorsal CD. I would say these are not short. And they're not expanded at the end. They might be blunt, tipped, but they're not expanded. The pronotal CD on D6, usually less than 20 microns. Let's take a look at those. Does everybody remember where D6 CD is on the thorax? It's right here. 
So I'd say that's not a short CD. We aren't fitting this couplet half, so let's move to the second part of this couplet. Most dorsal CD long, yes, we agree with that. D6 usually longer than 25 microns, I would also agree with that. So let's see if this, the rest of this couplet half matches our specimen. It asks if the D6 CD on the pronotum is usually longer than 25 microns. If in the range of 20 to 25, then the abdominal segment nine, uh, nine would be without sclerotization. In this case, we did look at the abdominal segment nine. It was darkened, so it has sclerotization. Let's take a look at that. There you have it, sclerotization, this dark pigmentation here. So we're fitting the second couplet much better than the first part of this couplet, which will take us to couplet number 51 on page 125. And the first part of this couplet asks for pronotal uh, CD D7. So we'll go back up there, take a look at that. D7 is shown here. And that couplet asks, if D7 is longer than 50 microns, the other alternative would be if it's shorter than 50 microns. We had said that it was that most of the CD on the body were 30 microns, so I would say that this is at least 50 microns. Pronotal CD D7 usually shorter than 50 microns. If longer, then the length of the sense cone on antennal segment four, not more than two-thirds the length of segment seven. So let's look at that characterization on that couplet, on the antenna. So the sense cone on four, not more than two-thirds the length of segment seven. Here's antennal segment four. The sense cone is here. And we have antennal segment seven is shown here. So roughly two-thirds. It's not quite the same length. So we actually fit the second part of, of couplet number 51, which takes us to couplet number 56 on page 127. This couplet asks if abdominal segment 9 at the posterior margin with enlarged spine-like teeth. Let's take a look at that segment. So this is your posterior margin here. And it's asking if you have large spine-like teeth. I would say these are not spine-like. These are triangular shaped. So what does our second part of this couplet ask? Abdominal segment nine at the posterior margin without enlarged spine-like teeth, but teeth subequal and up to nine micro microns long or absent. So we fit actually the second part of this couplet, which takes us to 72, couplet 72 on page 133. And the first part of this couplet asks if we have abdominal, on abdominal tergite nine dorsally with two companiform sensilla. We do have two companiform sensilla here, one here and one here. But the next part of this couplet is asking if that is separated by one and a half times the distance between the D1 CD. So here's your distance. And there's your companiform sensilla. So is that one and a half times? If you figure this distance here, bird's eye view from here, it's about two times. So I would say that we don't fit the first part of this couplet. We fit the second part of this couplet, which states that abdominal tergite nine dorsally with two companiform sensilla separated by more than 1.7 times the distance between the D1 and CD. And the second part of this couplet is tergite 10 with sclerotization extending at least to the dorsal sensilli. So let's look at tergite 10. And where are the companiform sensilla? Look at that right there. It's actually extending 
beyond up here. So that takes us to couplet number 122 on page 148. All right, now we're going to look at the thoracic nota, which is essentially the main body of the thorax. And it's asking if it has plates. If, does it, is it absent of plates or does it have plates? You can see here there are the plaques or the plates that we discussed earlier and there, there is an absence of them on the thoracic nota. So we actually fit couplet, the first half of this couplet, which takes us to couplet number 123 on page 150. This one asks if the dorsal body CD are pointed. So let's take a look at the dorsal body CD. These are on the thorax here, and they don't look pointed, they look sort of blunted. Let's take a look at the, at the um, main body again. They don't quite look pointed and acute. They look a little bit blunted. The next character they're looking at is the distance between the antenna at the base of the head. Let's get that in focus real quick. All right, so at the base of the antennal segments, it's asking if that antennal segment is about 30 microns distance between the two of them. Our other ult ulterior choice is the 20 microns. And remember we talked about the body C being about 30 microns earlier, and th that's on the thorax here. So those are the distance of about 30 microns. I would say this is a shorter distance between the antennal segments. And the base is what we're talking about, so this distance right here. So we're not actually fitting in the first part of this couplet. We actually fit the second part of the couplet. Dorsal body CD, pointed or blunt, head with distance between bases of antennal segments less than 20 microns. And the D2 are long, abdominal segments 2 through Seven, having plaques with or without microtrichia. And we already saw the plaques on this. One of the, one of the areas, uh, the D2CD on the head are considered to be long. So let's take a look at that real quick. And I would say, yes, this is the case. D2, D2CD right here, and those are long, especially compared to D1CD. So that takes us to couplet number 25 on the same page. And it's the first part of this couplet is asking if the antennal segment number six is pustulate or broadly attached to the segment five. So let's take a look at that. Antennal segment number six, shown there, right here. I would say that is not pustulate, it is not it's somewhat broadly joined, but not nearly as broadly joined as four and five. So I would say we do not fit that part of the couplet. So let's move forward to the second part of this couplet. Antennal segment six tubular. I would say yes. Width 13 microns. Antennal segment five about one and a half times wider. So yes, I agree with that. Six and five is one and a half times wider. Segment four, two and a half times as long as wide. There's your width. So yes, once, twice, probably two and a half times. And the facets of the spiracle without pores. So that's one of the characters we talked about earlier when we were introducing the characters on thrips. So let's take a look at the spiracle here. What it's asking is the facets of the spiracle don't have pores. Here's a facet, here's your spiracle, and there's no dot in the center, which would be your pore. If they would have dots, we would say no to this character. This does not have a dot centered into those circles. So these have no pores. 
Abdominal tergite number nine, usually with a postmarginal teeth. So let's move down to nine. And we see a well developed postmarginal row of teeth on this specimen. So we actually fit the second half of this character, of this couplet, 125, which takes us to the genus Franklinella. And that takes us to couplet number 126. Couplet number 126 asks about abdominal tergite 9, whether it's brown from the posterior margin to the campaniform sensilla. So let's take a look at this. There is your sclerotization right here. There's your posterior margin, and here are your campaniform sensilla. This sclerotization does not reach the campaniform sensilla. It is below that. So we don't fit this part of the couplet. So let's look at our alternative part to this couplet. 126 prime, or the second part. Abdominal tergite 9 with brown caudal band from posterior margin anterior to the dorsal CD, but not reaching the campaniform sensilla. So again, posterior margin past the dorsal CD, but not reaching the campaniform sensilla. So we actually meet that second half of the couplet, which takes us to couplet number 127. Couplet number 127 is asking about abdominal tergite 9, whether it does not have posterior marginal teeth. We already determined that it has teeth, so we don't fit that couplet. You can see on figures 268 the diagram or a photo of uh, teeth that are lacking on that particular specimen that is being keyed out in this couplet on the first half. So let's go to the second half of 127, couplet number 127. Abdominal tergite 9 with postmarginal teeth. Yes, we have that. Tergite 10, brown to campaniform sensilla. So let's take a look at that character. There's tergite 10 and the brown area the brown sclerotized area goes anterior to the campaniform sensilla. And the last part of this couplet is that the plaques on the tergites with or without microtrichia. These have little teeth, but without microtrichia on the body. So this takes us to couplet number 128. Couplet 128 says the head D2CD are 37 to 50 microns long, 1.4 to 1.7 times longer than the CDD4. So let's move to the head. D2 CD are here, and D4 CD is here. And it's asking if D2, this one right here, is 1.4 to 1.7 times longer than D4. So let's get D4 in focus just a little bit more. Let's actually look at the one on the left hand side. There's D4 right there in focus. And they actually look to be close to the same size. So we don't quite fit this part of the couplet. So let's look at our alternative. Head with D2CD shorter than or about equal to D4. Yes, we do fit that. Let's check the rest of this couplet. Abdominal tergites two through five with plaques with or without microtrichia. We've already seen that on this specimen. Abdominal tergite nine with posterior marginal teeth, mere points to well-developed. We have also decided we had that as well. And tergite 10, brown up to the campaniform sensilla. So we agree with that as well. This takes us to couplet number 129, the next couplet. Our choices here is to look at abdominal tergite number 9 with long posterior marginal teeth well developed. So let's take a look. 
We've seen these before, but let's just verify that we have well-developed teeth, and we do. All right, couplet number 129, abdominal tergite 9 with long postmarginal teeth well-developed, two or more times longer than the width of D1 CD. So the width of D1 CD is here, and these are at least two times the width of the CD. We fit this couplet, this part of the couplet. We don't fit the second part, which asks about abdominal tergite 9 with longer postmarginal teeth, two to five times, or less than two times as long as they are wide. So we don't fit that one, so we have identified this to the species of Franklinella occidentalis.